Hi everybody, I'm Bill Sanders and this is Watch Art Sci, the art and science of watch collection. Uh, today what I want to do is a couple things. Basically, sort of look at watches that, uh, that might look like things I'd like to look into next year. Uh, some of my, I can't afford now, I <laughs> won't be able to afford later, but some of you may be able to, and other ones I can't afford, and it's sort of like, sort of in the, the general direction. By the way, right now I'm wearing my uh, sweater I got in Estonia. Uh, one of the, one of our viewers came down with COVID-19, and we got to talking, <laughs> and, and he's from a uh, an Estonian community in uh, Toronto. So I told him I'd, I'd wear my uh, uh, Estonian sweater. I hope he gets better. So anyway, I think he's on the mend. So that's a good thing. Okay, so let's go on to taking a look into the year ahead of some ideas. Uh, the, the first one I have there is the Ak uh, Revia uh, Chronomet Contem Contemporain. This watch is beautiful, but not only that, uh, the guy who makes them, uh, Rexep, uh, Rexepi, his, his other watches are just incredible. And he sort of represents to me some of the new, some of the younger, uh, really, really talented watchmakers. And so that's something that I always like to keep an, out, uh, an eye out for. The second one is the um, Endeavor's cylindrical tourbillon. Now the thing about this is that it's a collaboration between H. Moser at C and MBNF. And that's some that's another thing I'm going to be looking for, some collaborations that are high value, uh, I hope not high price. <laughs> Unfortunately, usually one comes with the other. Now one approach to this is that is to find some really talented, award-winning watchmakers. Uh, here are two, uh, Antoine Prezuzio and um, Vincent Calabrese. The point of both of these, if you go and you're looking for watches by either one, you'll find them in there, you know, 50, 60, over $100,000 when you start looking at some of the tour beyond. But what both of, of these um, uh, watchmakers have done was that they decided to come out with some interesting ones that, but they had like a, uh, I think both of them have a, an ETA 2892A2 in them. That's okay because they did a lot of things to them. The uh, ones by Calabrese have Wandering Hours, which is something I'm always interested in. And the uh, one by Antoine uh, Prezuzio, um, his has a, it's a world map. I think it's viewed from the South Pole. It's very interesting uh, movement that, that he has added to, or, or I should say a, a module that he's added. Now, another route is, now these are what I'll call the the more modest, uh, the, the humbler end of the Grand Prix Awards. Uh, here are two, both of which won Grand Prix Awards from a category they call the Petite Aiguille. Uh, the one on the left is Harboring 2 Doppel Felix, which I just absolutely love that watch. And these watches are not, the thing I like about Harboring 2, they're not cheap, but they're not like crazy high. And uh, so this is, that was one. And the other one is uh, Kodoki 2, which also won more recently. And it's got a little day-night indicator. I like it. It's simple, it's clean, and it's um, handmade uh, pretty much. So... That's another, uh, th that kind of watch, it really, is that you have these this talent that hasn't gone crazy high, but you have some really high quality uh, materials in them. Uh, these two represent a couple things. One, I like the color of the uh, Panomatic Lunar. I think that's a new color they have. And so you, a lot of times you'll see some watches that you're used to seeing, but they're, they have a different color. That's another thing I find interesting. The Toric on the right is uh, for Palmer, you know, from Palmer Gianni. I, I, there's something about that watch I really like, and I found out uh, that's sort of a special edition. They only made 70 and they sold out. So, But it's that kind of watch that, 
It has these clean lines with an interesting gilo shade. It's kind of watch that I like, and I'm so I always have an eye out for them. Now, here are a couple others. The on the left is the uh, Streamliner uh, Center Seconds, and the Streamliner. There are only uh, two models they have. One is uh, has this wonderful uh, Aganor movement in it, and the other one uh, has a I think it's an HMC 200 uh, automatic in the Streamliner Center Seconds. These are this is sort of a new direction that I I I do like that H Moser has. They have some sort of dress sporty something like that but they're beautiful watches now this one is in green but they they'll probably be coming out with some other colors uh the other one is the omas on die kirch term moor sorry my german i just can't handle that in german it's basically it's an homage to a um a clock in uh, dresden germany and it had these unusual hands with the moon and the sun on the uh, on the hands themselves, plus the rest of the the style of it. Now this has a um, uh, Langenheim caliber six movement, and that's a movement I I happen to like. It's speaking of which, I happen to have on my uh, Frederick II by Langenheim. The Marco Lang stuff is is really incredible. Now. Both of these watches represent sort of watches that I'm keeping an eye on. Uh, the Gondolo 5098 has, I don't know what the number of the movement is, but it's one of the shaped movements that uh, was in the Gondolo line. I think it came out with the 5100 series of Gondolo. Uh, this 5098, I don't know how they're, how that, why it's 50 instead of 51, but it, has the same movement. It's an interesting watch. I like the movement. Uh, hand wound. Something I've wanted for a long time. Uh, now, next to it is the Easter Week Triple Calendar 1942. This watch is just a cool watch. I mean, it's got a hand date. It's got day date, or I should say day month. Uh, and something about it that I just, I just really, I've always liked that watch. And so, you know, you always have these things and maybe someday you're looking, somebody really needs some money quickly and badly and they got one for sale and coming along just the right time. <laughs> now, the final one by Marco Lang, this one I had had an entire uh, video on, and this watch is this, this incredible watch. Now, the only problem with it is that it's way out of my price range. These things start in steel at, I think, around $70,000, worth every penny of it, because they're all handmade. And this particular one, you flip over. Now, what this represents in a more generic sense are two things. One, this kind of innovation, really strictly mechanical watch innovation. Nothing, no synthetics or plastics or anything like that but really sort of taking this standard, I should say, good mechanical movements in a watch and doing something really fascinating with it. So you can look at it either side. Now, here's my wish. This is the other thing about it. Not only for Marco Lang, but for anyone. I mean, this is, uh, Marco Lang happens to be one of my favorites. Doesn't matter. <laughs> I can't afford most of the stuff that he has. But what I would like to see him do would to me make a, one of those open back in the back. You can see all all the the uh, gear train and everything else, and make it in an affordable way for collectors. Now I know that's asking a lot, especially if they're handmade. But maybe figure something out that just, you know, a two-hand watch. Um, just a nice one that you could look at the back and you could see all of the all of the way the the gears work. Sort of like the and the Georg that he did for Langenheim. So these are these are things that I'm looking at. Now some of the um the Patek Philippe, I guess, is sort of pretty much, you know, more traditional kind of stuff. 
most of these things, uh, with the exception of the Kadoki and Harboring II, or even the uh, Glasshoodie original, they're, um, they're not very affordable. <laughs> so what I always look for is, is something that it's not, I, I, you know, insisting on having exactly that one, but something with those characteristics that I can afford. So that's what I'm going to be looking for in the coming year. Uh, this last year, I had a, I mean, a terrible year, but wonderful watch here. So, you know, <laughs> so that was a good thing. I'm hoping for a wonderful year. I'll take an average watch year uh, coming up. Happy New Year to everyone. Uh, looking forward to a totally different, great new year. And um, everybody stay safe. And once you get your inoculation, you'll be okay. Happy New Year again. And until next time, this is Bill Sanders for Watch Art Side, the art and science of Watts Collection.